Good morning, lovely people. Welcome back to the lovely place. We're back at it again today, and today's project is something that, well, I'll just say I've been dreading and I've been extremely excited about. So it's going to be interesting. It's something that I've never done, but we're going to do this. We're going to get this homestead to a point where we have the ability to cook on a propane range and we have the ability to heat it with a gas propane heater right behind that we're going to install the wood stove and the chimney pipe but that's coming on a different video be looking for that one but this today is installing the black pipe for the propane and again i've watched a few videos so if you want to live dangerously watch this video and let's see how we do it for the very first time now that we have big red and little red out of a barn it's time to clean out the rest of the stuff that i've got piled up in there and then we're going to get started bringing some pipe in We are going to set this up at some point. This will be the heater that will be our backup to our wood stove. I also wanted to remind you that we're going to have three heat sources. So, as you know, we're putting solar into the lovely place barn slash tiny house. So the solar is going to power a mini split that does both heat and air conditioning. However, our main source of heat, got something in my eye, is going to be our wood stove and a backup to that will be the propane gas heater and the mini split. You may ask, why would you do three heat sources? And I say, why not? Why not? All right. I don't know if you saw the video where I talked about this rigid miter saw table but it has a multi-purpose use and you're going to see one of those right here today this table is pretty awesome there's a little lever here you just simply press it in and then you can just literally let it roll back and lock into place you come on this side and you just roll it wherever you want to it comes with two universal brackets that are universal for different miter saws but I ordered two additional brackets because I've permanently mounted these two brackets that came with this on my Ryobi corded miter saw, which we're not gonna be using today. But I ordered the two other brackets for about 30 bucks from Home Depot online. 
and I've mounted on there something that we are going to use today for our black iron pipe. So this miter saw, saw table is also my vice table. I would normally come in from the other side, but so you can see, it just you put that side in first and then click it into place and then press these down and you're locked in and you have a vice ready to go. I previously posted a video talking a little bit about this vise, but one thing I forgot to show everybody was that this vise rotates. There's a little pin back here and it will rotate side to side and you, it's got little detents that you can lock it in wherever you want to. And as you may remember, there is a pipe clamp on it and there is the regular vise clamp. And then of course you got the anvil that you can beat things into, into submission. But we're going to be using this pipe clamp today and the vise. Also, one of the cool features of this table is that you can just back off this little bracket and this will extend. You can raise and lower this section so that you can rest that pipe in by dropping these or raising them to meet the area that you're actually going to be resting the pipe on if you need to pretty cool all right so i want to show you the drawing that i created just so that i could uh, know the pipe length that i needed to get cut and uh, just how i began the whole project so uh, i'll show you first in the barn and we'll come back to the drawing so what we're going to do here in the barn is we're going to come in this back wall we're going to come in about right there in propane okay and we're going to have to take and i'll tell you how i came to these conclusions on the pipe size we're going to take a three quarter inch pipe and we're going to bring it down this direction we're going to tee it off i'm going to go up to the ceiling and across the rafters down over there out to the range and a heater inside this side inside the barn side or the garage side of the barn we'll also put a connection for the same heater that we can move it back and forth if need be and then back over here we're going to come off of that t down this wall go up and come in for our water heater which is going to be outside of this barn because it's not supposed to be according to what they say on the water heater specs it's not supposed to be an indoor heater and so uh, i mean water heater and i guess that's because it vents and uh, they don't want it to in any way vent inside so i'm going to eventually build a little pump house on the back of this and insert or install this pump let me show you this pump that we're going to be installing it is the box got a little wet but it's the drummond shallow well pump and tank i'm hoping that this tank is going to do the trick for me uh, as far as getting uh, the water from our uh, tanks that i'll be showing you more about the installation of these these big 1550 gallon black tanks that we're going to bring gutters off of this barn drop it into those tanks and then we're going to build a little pump house over here so that we can keep it insulated and we will pump that water into these lines right here after it goes through the water heater then it'll be going into this red hot line and then the cool water will be going through the blue line but that's that's the extent of our pipes and what we're going to be doing today so here is the drawing for it and here are the measurements so this is coming in oh on the outside of the barn i'm also going to tee down so that i can put a generator out there if i need to to uh provide any kind of uh propane into uh well the propane actually runs the generator which i can connect to uh, charge my solar system if i need to and then it comes in this goes down the floor area it tees up the wall it goes across those rafters comes back down that wall so that it will tee into the range and it will come out tee into the garage for the heater and come down this wall and tee into the heater and in the meantime off of this tee like i said we're going to go down the wall further on the floor come up the wall and out the back for the water heater that's the plan now i want to share with you something that i was not aware of in fact i wasn't aware of any of this i didn't know what kind of pipe that you use when you're going to uh, install propane into a barn or into a house i didn't know uh, how you would cut that pipe how you would thread that pipe but if you're like me you don't i mean i buy a lot of tools but i don't want to buy every tool that i need especially if i'm just going to need it one time 
And so instead of doing that, if you can get your measurements, you can go purchase these uh, black iron pipes at either Lowe's or Home Depot. In my case, I went to Lowe's. And I'll show you now, just a snippet of those guys when I bought this pipe, took my measurements in there, them cutting the pipe and threading it. It's pretty cool and it saves you a lot of time and some money. So we're up here at Lowe's at what, 6.30, 6.45 in the morning so we can get my friend Bob here to cut us some black iron pipe and we can get this propane ready to get into the, the barn. So right now we're on a half inch pipe and we need this one to be a total of 95 and a quarter inches long. We're gonna give a half inch on each side for thread. So that we're gonna cut this one 94 and a quarter inch. So here's my black iron pipe. This is a uh, stick that's, uh, it was originally a five foot stick. I had to cut down a little bit, about eight inches off of it to meet my measurements up there. This is a 10 footer. Uh, they did not have to cut this one or thread it because they come in 10, five foot sections and, and different lengths. They even have uh, nipples and nipples are these uh, w from one inch up to maybe three feet, just different lengths of pipe that are threaded. So these two are the three quarter and then I have all half inch going this way. Some of these are just scrap that was left off of the pieces that I had cut and threaded. But uh, this is what it looks like after they thread it. So before we get started on the project, I want to show you some of the tools that we're going to be using today uh, to get this thing accomplished. So you already saw the vise, but we'll start by just showing this to you again. We're going to probably put some pipe in here to try to tighten down some of these fittings on the end of the pipe, unless it's not able to fit inside the walls or the joists with that or the holes that I'm going to be cutting uh, with those fittings on it. If that's the case, then I'll be using these pipe wrenches that I purchased at Harbor Freight. And I believe I paid under $10 a piece for these, which is a phenomenal deal. Uh, and that way, uh, this is the kind of wrench you need for this black iron pipe. This will do the trick. Now, of course, you're going to want to seal the pipe. That's the most important part about this job. And when we get this all installed, we're going to be hooking up a uh, compressor. And we're going to putting, be putting some air pressure into these pipes with a gauge on it and make sure that we have no leaks. We're going to test the fool out of that and make sure that there is not going to be a propane leak, leak in this uh, pipe in this barn but this is called a uh, slow dry soft set number five pipe thread sealant it's multi-purpose and it specifically is good to use on uh, propane and gas pipe it's yellow and that's a normally a good sign that that's for gas this is also something that i picked up this is a uh, uh, thread tape for pipe and it also clearly mentions propane as well uh, propane and butane and petroleum uh, so yeah natural gas and methane propane and butane blah 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 so a lot of people will combine these and use both 
Um, but at the very least, you, from what I've learned, you must use the pipe dope. That's the stuff that really does the trick. I think I'm going to combine it and see what I get. Uh, I have some leftover three-quarter inch uh, pipe clamps. And I'm going to be using these if I need to mount this against the wall. This three-quarter inch is going to be used on the half-inch pipe. And I'll show you something that's important for you to know. Uh, Half-inch pipe is actually the internal diameter of this pipe. The external is closer, probably to three-quarter inch. Um, so that means that the three-quarter, this three-quarter does not fit on it because the three-quarter is the internal diameter of the pipe. That's an important lesson to learn. I've also got this product. Uh, you can get metal or plastic so you can strap these pipes, hold them up while you're pushing them across and then you can tighten them down with this to keep them in place as well i'll be doing that with some drywall screws and i need my trusty milwaukee drill and after that here are all the fittings that i'm going to be using as you probably saw in the drawing i had counted up my fittings i have a lot of half inch elbows here's a half inch t that's in the wrong spot let's put that over here i have three of those i think i got seven elbows and then i have uh other tees that are different versions so this comes in at three quarter and it goes out at a half on two different spots this one uh is the same way no this was three quarter three quarter and a half coming out of that and then this one's the same as that one and this is a coupling a couple of this will get us uh, to connect those that five footer approximately five and ten footer and bring them together so we're going to get started now before we get started i want to show you a challenge that i'm dealing with something that i just don't know the answer to you can only learn so much from youtube from with me when you watch this channel you will see somebody try things and not always know if it's the right thing to do i will make sure it doesn't leak that you can count on so you don't have to worry about that but what i don't know is can i take this three quarter inch pipe and instead of drilling holes going this way through my six by six and that six by six and that went on the other side of the window to run that pipe down through there and the reason I will I know I'm coming in here but the reason I'm going to be drilling out that way is I'm going to put another half inch pipe out that way for a grill that we're going to be setting out there but I'm wondering if I can simply run my pipe between the metal and this now if I do that which I think I can, I'm gonna give it my best shot to do. Instead of drilling holes through this six by six and potentially weakening this, weakening this six by six, uh, I can do that, but here's the problem if I do. I'm gonna have to elbow it out and then elbow it up. And so I'm going, that way I can come up and get into the area that I pre-measured for before. I can't come through here and go straight up or I'll hit this two by six. So, some of you are probably saying, you absolutely cannot do that because you're an expert and you know the answer to this. And others who are experts might be saying, sure, that's exactly what you should do. But <laughs> I don't know, I'm not the expert, but we're gonna try to figure it out. I noticed that I was short on a couple of um, fittings and a nipple or two, and so I ran to the local supply house. When I was there, there were a couple of gentlemen there that looked like they knew what they were talking about, and they pointed out this product. I showed you earlier the tape in the Blue Monster brand. I didn't see this actual pipe dope in the Blue Monster brand until I was at that uh, supply house. They said they prefer it over the yellow, number five pipe dope. I don't know which is better. I'm just taking their word for it. They seem to be the kind of guys that know what they're talking about. They look like they do this a lot. In fact, they actually worked for the county doing this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go with their word. I'm gonna trust this and it absolutely is for all kinds of things. It mentions all of the possible uses that you would think of that this is recommended for and liquid propane gas is one of those along with natural gas so we're going to go with this instead all right so we're getting started now and the first thing that i want to do is kind of dry fit everything so what we have here is one section is 10 feet long of the three quarter we obviously cannot th this section between here and here is probably only about seven feet maybe maybe six and a half it won't set up here it won't prop in and go 
through. So luckily, I'm going out this wall anyway, like I said, for the gas grill. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be coming out. I'll be drilling a hole through here, coming out, and I'm going to be taking all the full length of pipe in through here and running it behind it. Now, when you get down here, there's a coupler that's going to join this 10-foot piece to this piece that's close to 5 feet. And since I mentioned to you that I was going to be back behind this 2x6, this is a half inch. I was just using this as an example. It'll be back here. Instead of an elbow, though, it will actually be this 3 quarter, and it'll be with this T. And then I've got a 1 inch, actually it's about a 2 inch nipple in between with an elbow here. This is 3 quarter, this is half inch, and this is half inch. So now we're going half inch out toward the range and the heaters. And we're doing a half inch out toward the uh, the water heater as well. The three quarters is what we needed to get the gas into the house, into the barn here. And so I can't drill a hole. I can't put this on the vise and start mounting all of this because I've got to slide it. I've got to come in the end of the barn down there through a hole, and I want to make that hole as small as I have to. And so that being the case means I'm not going to get to use my vise on these particular items i'm going to need to use my pipe wrenches so we're going to start drilling some holes and start running some pipe so on the inside i didn't have a bit that was long enough so i measured and i'm going to go in from the outside hoping that i come close to where this hole needs to be at way to start okay well we got something going let me get a screwdriver and pull that out A lot more to get through. Okay, so now that we've got the hole drilled in the side of the wall, we're going to be bringing the pipe in in the order that it needs to come in so that the, the part that's down this way first, which is the half inch, comes in first and then we'll feed everything else in behind it. Do this. You stay on this side and see if you can see in the hole if it's going to come through. Okay. Now the reason we're doing this, of course, is because the pipe won't fit inside behind this wall unless we bring it in through this hole. We'll just keep pushing it all the way down. So if you would take a peek here, we've got the pipe in the clamp. Now we're going to put some pipe dope on the threads and put our three quarter inch coupler on. That way I can use that going through the wall and I won't have to do that after the fact. So I can do it up here where it's going to give me the best results. I'm just going to stir this up and then we'll get started. Well, they say the worst part about using this pipe dope is the mess it makes and we're about to, we're about to see that firsthand. I don't know how thick to go. I just want to get it good and liberally spread over these threads. Whoa, I'm about to lose that one. I don't know if this has been bent or if that's the way it's supposed to be, but it kind of makes it real awkward to work with. All right. around this way. 
That's better. God, this, this pipe. Ranch just wants to keep loosening on me. Maybe that's why it was under 10 bucks. Okay, I think I got that in tightened. That pipe wrench takes some getting used to. But now I'm gonna take this piece out and we've gotta add the 10 footer onto the end of this one. All right, so I'm gonna put the 10 footer in the, in the vise. approximately 15 foot long pipe shove it in the side of the garage behind all these boards and six by six posts so that then I can add the T and I'll be doing that with two pipe wrenches let's do that situations like this so that's why they did that I'm a guessing challenging just not having the room to do it I think that's the hard part about this is when you're in a spot that doesn't allow you to have any room to do anything how do you make it happen and how do you do it with just two hands let's try this Now we gotta come all the way back around to get this T to go out the wall. And it's already getting pretty tight, so let's hope that I can get it back around all the way. Okay. 
so I'm opposite of where I need to be now and well the fun <laughs> I don't have to do that this whole pipe can rotate so I can currently rotate it any direction I want to because I'm not locked in on the other side so uh, yeah I think we're tight enough. The fellas at the supply house told me that the basic way that this seals is this beads up on the ends and it forms almost like a weld. And so if we've got a good bead here, I think that goes a long way in sealing this. hanging this band to get this hanging near the area that we want it to be eventually permanently placed in uh, we're gonna just get some things tightened together and then we'll get this more of a permanent fix We're getting somewhere so we've got this pole this pipe going all the way down there where it would be going out of the wall and i'm going to have to maintain this position here because that's where the hole is going to go out the wall we're not ready to do that yet but i want to keep it there so that when i tighten down the uh t bracket here that the t is pointing up and of course it'll point out but i've got to get it to point Actually, it's gonna be pointing straight out this way because we're gonna elbow it from here. Let's monster it up. Straighten it up down there and see where we're landing. Yep. Okay, you want to go down there and take another peek and see? Is it right? It's right. Staying steady, I think we can do a few more little turns here and we'll probably be right where we need to be. I'm gonna go take a look myself because I moved it a little since you walked back. Right. Yeah, it's still good. Okay, good. I didn't move it too far. So, all we want to do is get it horizontal right there. I believe that we're pretty much spot on. It's only 4.15 in the afternoon, and we have all of this done. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so 
the reason is there was a lot to figure out for me and I had to make some errands, run some errands and uh, find the right tools and blah, blah. So uh, we're gonna keep going and work until it gets dusk and then we'll be back tomorrow to wrap this up. But let's keep this thing going. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and work right here on the vise and I'm going to put these two items together so that uh, I don't have to do that down there in the floor and then I'll put it all as one unit on the piece that we've got coming out of the wall there. We could do this all day. <laughs> I don't mean to do it like that. It just, a lot comes out on that brush and there's not much you can do about it. I didn't want to tighten this too much because I didn't want to get in on those threads and hurt them. I'm just gonna keep trying to Keep some leverage and get this tight. I believe we're pretty good. All right, now it's time to put it over here. Yeah, the guys at the uh, wholesale shop told me that you can't wash this stuff off. It pretty much has to wear off. So you'll be seeing this in a few future videos. Some blue fingers. Monster blue. Now this one we've got to position it the, when it tightens down that it's pointing straight up. All right, so let me put the lid on this. We'll get the pipe wrench and get to work. I have no leverage here. Oh my gosh. I got it the complete opposite way that it needs to be, so I gotta get some work on this done. Go over there real quick and tell me if that end's good, would you please? Yeah, it's good. Okay, I think we're good. All right. So just trying to line this pipe up with this pipe so that it'll be supported when I When I go to dope it and screw it in. Let's do the same thing on the other side. All right, we are hitting the mark. Right at the moment, I'm about two inches from this mark, but once I get tied in and slide things down a little bit I think we'll be a little closer this is what I was shooting for but uh, yeah we're just kind of roughing it at the moment time to dope up a half incher Thank you. 
I didn't adjust that area down there. Can you go down there for me one more time? And see. Right now? Yeah, it's right. All right. I think that did it. Now, we should still be even down there on that end. You want to check and make sure that we're still good? We are perfect. Awesome. All right, now we're going to make a run straight up up to the loft, then we're gonna go all the way across and then down. So let's get this pipe doped up. <clears throat> I think I bit, yeah, I'm in. Mean, Get these pipe wrenches. Get to work. That's the way the pipe wrench is supposed to work. I think that'll do it. Well, I sure hope that this seals. I hope we have no leaks. There's no way for me to know if I'm giving it enough tightness or not, but it feels like I'm, I'm doing it to the point where it's snug enough that it's going to seal, but we'll find out when we do a pressurized test. It's going right up where we want it to go. I'll be drilling a hole through there, putting an elbow on, which is gonna be tough getting an elbow on that pipe that's up inside the wall there. But right now, let's focus on this. This is the half inch pipe that's gonna go out to the water here. I've got an elbow right here. And we're gonna see if we can add that on this end. And we're gonna want it to go out like that. I thought for a moment I was gonna have to uh, elbow out, but there's enough flexibility in this half inch pipe that I can come up on the outside of this two by six with this additional half inch pipe here. So first things first, Dope up some thread. Let's see here. Best way to get into this one. Okay, we're gonna end up wanting to come straight up with it, so I'm gonna turn, won't go around one more time so that it'll come straight up and it will be good. Now I'm gonna go make sure that I move it on the other end so that I am straight up. I'm still good. Still good down here. Yep, I'm still good. Okay, we'll tighten it the rest of the way to get it completely vertical. There we are. That should be close, right there. Please comment, let me know if you th think I put enough pipe dope on all of this or if I put way too much. Okay. She's the one who already got 
did it two and a half inch. We need to turn her around. By the time this job's over, I will remember the position that's best to put a pipe wrench on a pipe. Maybe. Give it just a little bit more. All right, that one's definitely snug. This one probably won't leak. Okay, so check it out where it's coming out right here. So I'm gonna grab a elbow and see if it's, my goal was to get it to fall right below this two by six so I can go out right below it through the wall. Yeah, by the time that gets on there and gets down, it's gonna be right where it needs to be. I think I still need to go a little tighter. My question, should I go all the way around one more time? Because that's what I'll have to do. Can you go too tight? No. I've heard that you can tighten it to the point where it would crack the pipe. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't ever crank it down as much as I can do, you know? Yeah. All right, let's try it this way. I think I can get it around again, no problem, without any worries. Okay, it's definitely getting tight now. All right, we just got another half turn to do. All right, that should do it. Hopefully it tightened enough here and it didn't just keep tightening down there because I was not holding back on that. But I believe we got, I think we're good in both spots. We shall see. So I made a mistake by not putting that elbow on up there at the top of this with my vise before I inserted this. I started putting that on and then I felt this turning. Problem is, I sealed this last night. So I'm gonna take this whole pipe out. I wanna just take a, a, a wire brush and clean it up and I'm gonna reseal it and put it back in here. So let's hope that that will take care of our problem and keep it sealed. My concern is that it's not gonna be good and sealed if I don't do that. So it needs to go one full turn at least to get the elbow at the top in the right position. Okay, I'm halfway there. All right, 
that looks to be accurate. Hopefully I didn't cause any damage down here in these other fittings. The uh, stuff was still very tacky that was even on yesterday's work. So uh, I'm assuming it takes a good while to set up. I need to read and confirm that. But now we are at least, we are straight in. I believe I can stand to go. Yeah. I believe that's definitely close enough to get it in there. Just gonna show you what that looks like up there, how it's pretty close to flush against the uh, against the floor joists up there of the loft. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna drill a hole and we're going to join this long pipe into that elbow. Perfect. Don't get much better than that.
people so we we got here to the lovely place today to do a little bit more black pipe for the propane and this wind as you can see it is blowing strong feels like uh, any moment one of these big old beautiful trees could come crashing down on us so uh, we're going to keep our eye to the sky and make sure that uh, we can try to stay in a spot there is no spot up here that's that's going to be safe if that were to happen I can't tell you how many times when it's not even this windy, not even close, that we've been walking through the woods or we're out here working in the front and we uh, hear this crash, boom, and we look over and a big tree limb just came out of a tree or something like that. As you guys probably remember, we've got this dead one right down here. I'm expecting that might just drop any time. Anyway. Let's keep working. So the wind has died down a little bit outside and so we're inside and uh, doing some dry fitting of these pipes to uh, make sure that I have everything I need. So if you can see right here, this is what used to be this little drawing here. I'm gonna do it, run everything a little bit differently. So this back side of this uh, cross here is gonna be what goes out to the outside from the, the, the back of the barn. And uh, I'm just gonna put this together as if it's going uh, out back and we'll talk about what's going to be where. Right here, we have uh, going out to a, a generator, uh, any particular line that I'll eventually hook up if I need to hook up my generator that will run off of propane. This will be my gas grill or vice versa. They're both on a half inch. Um, coming out of here, we're gonna move this over with an elbow down to this area. This will be the in, inlet for the main propane line. So let's get these together. I had to go purchase a few extra pieces just to make sure that we had what we needed to get this accomplished. So this is going to connect right here. This is a three quarter inch and we're going to drop it down using this and we're going to take it from a three-quarter to a one-half now we've got a half inch let's see is this the size I wanted to use no, I think I'm going to go with it yeah I guess that is what I'm planning on using and gonna take it again this is just a dry fit it's gonna be much tighter and which will make everything a little bit shorter a little bit, a little bit better let's do this short one here It'll look something like that this will look something like that Now the good thing is I'm nine inches off the ground when I come out of the barn, okay? So nine, let's, let's assume that this is the ground level here. It goes up about nine inches or so, comes out of the barn, and I'm just now back down to nine inches above. So seems to be working out pretty good. And then this half inch shutoff valve will be right here. And again, this one will be for the grill or the generator. I'm not gonna tighten it up. But that looks like that's gonna do the trick. This will be out this way. So from here, again, this is where it comes out of the wall from the barn. 
what we're going to do right here is we're going to add uh, an extension and we're going to bring this out not too far but we're going to put an elbow on it get the elbow on so it'll come over this way then we'll extend it out Again, just a dry fit. We want it out a little bit further away from this section over here where we're going to be using these shutoff valves for the other pieces. But this is what's com coming in directly from the actual propane tank. So that's the shutoff valve for that. Now, down here, if you can come on in here real close. You see this now of course this will be pointed down toward the ground we're going to stick this on it and we're going to have a cap and i saw on another youtube video where they do this so that when gas first comes in before it pushes anything through the line that might be contaminated so it's going to be coming in here going in that way so if any particles might be there it could potentially drop off into this cap. This could be a clean out if you needed to use it for one. I could do a shorter uh, nipple here if I had one, uh, but I'd rather have that short one here so this is not protruding out far from the barn, but we may replace this. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea. That's what she's gonna look like on the back of the barn. So we're going to have um, multiple boxes coming out of the wall, you know, uh, where like, for example, the gas range, uh, it's going to want, we're going to want to slide it in uh, right up against the wall. And I did not want a piece of, you know, iron pipe sticking out with some sort of a, a shutoff valve there on the outside of the wall, because if you do that, you can only push the range so close to the wall uh, and you're going to ha have the gap behind it. And same thing goes with any other item that we're connecting in. And those are our gas heater, which is the Mr. Heater. You'll see another video on that where we're putting it together and everything. Uh, so I looked into finding some boxes that, would, uh, that I could insert in the wall and connect to. And this is what I found. This is called Sioux Chief. And uh, I'll show you this, I'll unwrap it here. I ordered these on Amazon. And uh, I read the reviews, and they are really, really phenomenal reviews. So what we got is a bag. I ordered three of these because the even though we're only going to have inside the, the tiny house here, we, we're only going to have a gas range and a gas heater hookup. I also put the same gas heater, or I'm putting the same gas heater hookup back there in the garage, so I can take the heater, the Mister Heater. Uh, it's a 30,000 BTU heater, and I can either set it here and run a, run a heater off the propane, or if I have the wood stove going in here, but maybe I'm a little chilly out there where I'm working, I'll take that heater around there and I'll have heat as well, if needed. May never use it, but in any case, we got it. So this comes with some instructions, and this just pulls off. This is the wall plate that once you mount it, it goes over it and gives it a nice clean finish. But yeah, look at this. This is the connections that came with it. The shutoff valve and the brass fitting that connects to your black iron pipe. So it goes something like right here. This should go up underneath here. This little nut, this little lock nut here, just locks that down into place, actually putting it on the wrong way I think yeah we need to go that way that's it put the uh, nut down here to lock it on okay then you have this shutoff valve in here turn that will thread up inside there All right, I'm not going to tighten it all down, but you get the idea. And just to show you what it looks like on the wall, I've already dry fit this one <clears throat> for the range. And as you can see, this will come in place. I'll be putting 
It comes with something else that's really neat. Let me show you this in case you mount it like I do where it's not actually on the stud because this is designed to screw, uh, you know, into the, the stud wall. But since I'm not on the stud, let me show you what you can do. So it comes with this little piece here that slides apart and extends and you have these little holes right here where you can put it through it and take this all the way to the stud. And in this case, I've got a bad spot over here because it's coming up against this electrical outlet. But I can put a board over here and uh, mount it to it. But that's going to give you some sturdiness down low and up top. So there's the one that will be used for our range. And somewhere approximately in this area will be the one that we'll use for the 30,000 BTU Mr. Heater. Uh, the heater, of course, can just sit out here. We can position it any direction we want to uh, because it'll have a, a, a braided... Uh, hose uh, for propane that uh, will allow us to kind of maneuver it a little bit. We're not going to keep it there permanently. It's just kind of as needed. We'll keep it stored unless we need it. And then out back, I'll show you that momentarily. But first, I'm going to do a little dry fitting of this area here. Now what we're doing is we're going from this T fitting down here into this 2x4 to the back side of this and then coming out and going down to that box there where again we'll be placing the heater we're, it, once we get behind this two by four we're going to put a t so it can come that way but it can also go straight down the wall we're going to go down a couple of feet and uh, put another box out toward the back in the garage for that same heater if needed so let's dry fit it all right so from here we're going to take this seven inch nipple actually it's an eight inch sorry i believe yeah it's an eight Anyway, we're going to take this thing, and we will be drilling a hole through this 2x4. It's going to show you, first of all, where we're fitting it. So, I'll turn this... Actually... Turn this this direction for a moment with the dry fit. We'll pretend that it's going straight through. And from here, we will have this T on. And it will continue on past the second two by four right over here. It'll be about right there. And that's where I'll put the box facing the outside. This will all be coming through. And this piece will, of course, it'll be up high here, but it will be coming in right there. Now you get the picture. Let's just pretend it's connected. And then it will be somewhere at this box. This will be back quite a bit. So this box won't be hitting this two by four and we can mount it right here. First thing I want to do is disassemble all of this and drill a hole right through here. Before I take that elbow off, I'm going to just put this straight into here so I can find a pretty close spot to where that hole is going to want to go. It's actually pretty level right there. I'm going to bring it this way just a little bit. I believe just to make sure that I've got enough pipe to go through. I'm going to bring it off of level slightly. Hopefully we'll have us a good spot. So I'm marking the top of the hole. Now we're going to go back. I just mark it right here. And then we're going to measure back, determine how far back it needs to go so that it's in line with this, the dimension from here back. So now let's take this out so that we can have room for our box for measuring. What I need to do is take my tape measure and just see how far back it is off of this lip here to the center of the hole. So to the center of the hole, we are pretty close to an inch and a half, maybe shy of it. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say we're probably an inch and three eighths. So we'll go back an inch and three eighths back here. One inch. One, two, three. I think we're close. Let me get a better look at that. Yep, that's about an inch and three eighths right there. 
Well, as soon as I said that's an inch and three eighths, it occurred to me that this is butting up to another two by four. And as you know, the width of a two by four is an inch and a half. So that means I'm actually going to have to make a little bit of a change here. And that may affect where my box lands as far as how far out or how far in it is because that's going to want to pull it back in further. So I may have to make a, a bit of an adjustment uh, maybe by putting some sort of a very short nipple. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, there's no doubt I'm going to have to deal with this other 2x4. And there's actually two of them. We've got one here butted up to it, and then there's another one butted up to that. Now, after that, you have your normal stud 2x4s. So, I think instead of messing up my plan, I will stick with the measurement that I originally wanted to stick with, which is the inch and 3 eighths. And I'll just drill out over on that side. I'll drill out a little portion of this two by four or cut it out. It might be challenging, but we can do it. Looks like I'm coming out. All right, so my goal now, if you look down here, is I'm coming in this two by four here. I'm wanting to come through and take out just a section I'll be trying to do it with this bit here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be successful or not, but let's let's give it a go. Get in here. Is it doing anything over there? Is it eating into it? Yeah. My hope is to get about to here. And I feel like I'm getting a little ways. I'm gonna come around and try it maybe from the other side. Looks like a pretty solid try here. Um, unfortunately, I see a nail right in line with this on this two by four. And as you know, this is going to come all the way through where I'll be putting a box about right here coming into the garage. So I'm gonna have to continue this all the way down. So I'm gonna think about the smartest way to do this. So what I think I'll do first is just get a good mark to know exactly where I'm going to be working. So here's the top of this. <laughs> there we go. And then we have the bottom. That will tell me where I need to be chiseling, where I need to be taking wood out. So I think for this project here, I will go with this trusty Milwaukee multi-tool and we'll go in and start chipping away at this wood and uh, I'll change over to a metal bit to go through that nail. That's the plan. Let's see if that works out. Here we go, let's start from down here. I wish this was out of my way because I can't get the best angle. But let's see what we can do.
I think I got down to where the nail is. I want to swap uh, blades now. Okay, so we're going to open up this Diablo set. I've got a couple Milwaukee blades in here, but this particular one, this Diablo blade, is for nail embedded wood. So we'll take this and we'll hit that nail with it. So all you got to do, I always like taking the batteries off before I mess with the blades. So let's take this thing and loosen it up. Remove this. Take that one. Put it on here and get it back down in there. All right, we're all set with the nail embedded blade. Let's see if we can knock this one out. All right, here we go. I'm through, went through like butter. So now is the interesting part. I've obviously not connected my little V in the middle of this 2x4. I'm up at this angle, I'm down at this angle, but I've not connected and it's really due to the fact that I don't have a good angle. But I'll start chipping away in the middle and see if I can make that all come out in chunks. So to do this I put my wood, right, that also says well, I guess the entire time I was using a nail embedded wood blade, so I could have went through it with the original one, I guess, unless, did you not give me the same one back? This is says metal, and I gave you the one that was... So, I guess all of those blades that are for wood are for nail embedded wood, so anyway. Yeah, this one you just gave me back says nail embedded. Nail embedded, yeah. All right, well, I changed those out for nothing, but this change, that was like the first time I've changed the blade since I put the first one on it. This is a new tool to me not quite used to it but uh, anyway that went much smoother let's see if we can put a dent in this start knocking these out uh, will you hand me that battery please always helps put your battery back on all right Sure, there's a prettier way to do this, but that got the job done. Okay, now we'll get through this two by four and we'll be ready to put our box over on this side. So, what I want to do first is just kind of come through here with this, see how that feels. Feels like it's going to go through there pretty well. Uh, but here's the challenge I will be putting a T, so let me bring this T out here and I will be putting here is it going to sit in there properly or do I need to dig back further actually this part here will be facing in that way and so I'll be drilling my hole through there first and putting this all together it's gonna be interesting so I just brought this length of pipe through here so that I can make myself a mark on this two by four. Kind of where it's landing when it's uh, coming through this direction. I'll go ahead and get that hole drilled out, but I'm gonna have to be careful to make sure that this box on this side actually 
is going to be able to be coming in at the right position. So in order to do that, I'm probably going to want to just carefully come this direction toward me a little bit when I come through this hole, when I make this hole I mean, or make it just larger, large enough hole so that I can maneuver this a little bit and that this will be in the right position. It's actually going to land somewhere out in this area. And what I mean by that, just, just to make sure I'm being clear, these, th this box needs to be at this position away, this, you know, these tabs need to be right on the 2x4 or if I'm mounting it somewhere in the middle of these studs, it needs to be in that same position so I can put that metal uh, strap across there and hold it. And that way when I put my either sheetrock or whatever it is that we do, you know, the walls with out here, that this will be in the right position that I can slide the cover on it and it'll look nice and finished. So <clears throat> in order to make that happen, again, I might have to angle this bar out just a little bit this way due to the fact <clears throat> that when this sets in the wall, this hole right here is not in the center of the two by four. It's this side of the center. And so we'll make it work. Tough. That's a tough two by four. Tore it up good, didn't I? We're gonna have to come on this side of it, drill in. Let's get a little bit fatter hole here. so I'm just spreading that hole out so we can move it any direction we need to. All right, now I'm gonna take an inch and three eighths bit and get through this two by four. This one happens to be the one that, actually no, I need to get some measurements because these two, this is not the one that's on that wall. This is kind of in the middle of that one or on the left side. This, where these two come together is almost the middle of the other one. So let's get some measurements. So <clears throat> that two by four is two and an eighth inches away from the edge of this one. I'm gonna go in that much on here. I've got me a mark going here. We know that a two by four width is three and a half inches. So let's go three and a half inches over to here, make our mark and let's cut that in half. So half of three is one and a half and half of half is a quarter. So we're gonna do what, one and three quarters. One and three quarters is the center. So right about here is the center of this two by four on the other side. So that's where we're going in. Sure there's no wires or anything over there. Look at the She's smoking hot. And I'm not talking about this is lovely. Although she is too. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh yeah. That's dead center, baby. Looks good. As you can probably tell in there, it's a little dark. The camera always shows it lighter than it actually is. The sun has went down and uh, of course, we're in the dead of winter, so it gets dark early. We're not dark out here by any stretch, but 
dusk is coming quickly we're at dusk i'll let you see the sunset back here nice it's beautiful so that being the case and the fact that we're working inside means that i should have started this project earlier today the continuation of this project but god willing there's always tomorrow and uh we'll be back at it